Hello everyone and welcome to this course on creating a spaceship in Blender. We're going to be doing a lot of different vehicle modeling techniques and things like that as we go throughout the course. So hopefully you've already checked out the uh, introductory video or the trailer. Uh, if not, go ahead and have a look and if so, we'll get started. So the first thing you're going to need is obviously you're going to need Blender uh, and then you're also going to need the download package that is available in the link on this uh, video course or you can get it from my 3D art page as well. So it comes with a number of different drawings and and one Blender file. So we have the Fighter three-quarter view, which is the original concept art that Eric did right here. We also have the uh, back and front views there, as well as the side views and the top view. Now this Blender file in here that says Fighter Model Setup is exactly what you're looking at right here. It's this Blender file and it comes with these images already pre-positioned. Now if you'd prefer to just download the images and position them yourself, that works as well. But however you'd like to get it set up, just go ahead and do that, and in the next video we'll get started building the model. Hello again and welcome to the second video in our course. In this part we're going to go ahead and block out the basic shapes of the body. As you can see there's not too much detail to the model at this point, but it does line up with the, uh, the drawings from various views, and it'll give us a good basis to work from. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'll do is say Shift S, cursor to center, go ahead and add a cube, uh, come into edit mode and just scale that down. I'm going to drag it to the back of the ship here so it matches that. Alright, then I'll bring this all the way forward here and scale that down on the x-axis. Then we can come to our side view and grab the whole thing, either in object mode or in edit mode, doesn't really matter. And we'll bring that up so it's level with the top, grab the bottom, and bring it down so that front corner right here matches. You could do this any way you want really, but I think this is a pretty good way to do it. So I'll grab this face back here now and we'll drag that down so that the angle of this edge along the bottom matches. We can grab these two vertices up here and pull this down here. Okay, and then just coming to our back view, we can just grab this edge at the back and just bring that up so that matches right there. So that's about the right shape. And then we just have to put a loop cut or an edge loop right here grab these two vertices and drag those down. So that's about the uh, the right shape there for that center part of the body. So at this point we're going to go ahead and work on these side parts of the body. I'm just going to add a circle using 64 sides or 64 vertices. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees there on the x-axis and I'm just going to bring it over here and I'm going to try to match this outside shape um, right here, just this line that comes out at an angle and then comes around here and then back down. And I realize there are some other shapes in here and we can de deal with those later. But right now I just want to get that overall outline. So then I'll just pick the vertices that we don't want and I'll just delete those. Now I'll take those uh, very end vertices right there and I'll extrude those on the x-axis, bring them pretty close to the middle there and just scale those up just like that. So we get roughly the uh, the shape that we need or the shape that we want right there. Now I'm going to come to the top view and I'm going to bring this all the way forward to the widest part of the ship or widest part of the engine section which is right here. I'll go ahead and extrude those back to you know the back most part of the ship right there which is right here and I'll repeat that for the front as well. Okay and I think looking at the side view here um, we may have a spot right here where the angle of this changes. It may also just be this plate. Uh, the plate is actually at an angle, but um, I think there's a chance that the shape of this curved part changes as well. So I'm just going to put another edge loop in here and we can deal with that later or delete it if we need to. So I'm just going to now grab these two vertices here and say cursor to selected. Then we'll grab all these front ones and then come to the front view. I'm going to switch my pivot point to 3D cursor and just sort of scale those down towards that and I'm trying to match this edge here right there so I'm going to scale this down on the Z a little bit like that and actually it looks like maybe we want to grab the whole thing and move it down just a little bit like that okay so we'll scale that up and then what I'm going to do is deselect these two vertices switch back to bounding box center and scale this on the X just a little bit because what I want to do here um, is make sure that the curved part ends right about where this vertex is and right about where this line is. So we can just have flat panels in here and flat panels down here. And I don't want this curved part to be cutting into that and creating any uh, trouble there down the road. Now I'm going to repeat that for the back section. We'll just pick these two vertices and say cursor to selected. Grab all those and then we're just going to come to the uh, back view here. 
switch back to 3D cursor for our pivot point, scale those down, and we're just trying to match, you know, basically this angle. But the other thing we're trying to do from our side view um, is to match. Oops, I'm going to scale this on the z-axis. So we sort of want to match this edge that we created earlier with that center box part. We want to match that. So I'm scaling that on the uh, z-axis there a little bit. I just like to make sure that that lines up. So now we have the overall shape of that part of the body that we want. Um, what I'm going to do is grab this top edge here and we're just going to make this front section really quickly. I'm just going to extrude that on the y-axis, bring that all the way down here, and then I'll grab this vertex here and we'll just move that one right there so that's the right shape coming to our side view um, you can see that this is supposed to come down right here so what I'm going to do is just pick that vertex say cursor 2 selected and then I'll just grab that one here switch to 3D cursor and say scale Z uh, 0 just so that we have a perfectly flat edge right there so now what I want to do is kind of run an edge loop around here and we're going to delete the parts that we don't need. So I'm just going to pick these vertices and just sort of, uh, I'm just hitting my G key twice there and we're just going to eliminate the parts of this uh, up top that we don't want. Oops. So I'm actually then going to come to my side view and we'll find the uh, the middle edge here which is the one that will be perfectly straight. I'm going to use my V key to rip that, delete that bottom section. We'll put our cursor there at that edge, switch to 3D cursor and I'm just going to duplicate everything and say scale Z negative 1 then I'll go ahead and remove doubles and hit my control N function to fix the normals. And so what I basically just did was mirror the top to the bottom uh, so everything matches uh, well on that axis now. Then I'll just use, or I'll just uh, join those two uh, edges to a face right there, fill in a face on that one, one on the front as well, and we can fill that back one in right there also. Now it looks like this extrudes a little bit past that main body, so this is one of those times where you can just grab this edge um, even though we matched it up with a drawing earlier, just pull it down a little bit there um, so it sort of matches up there. Uh, the top looks pretty good and the back looks pretty good as well. So now let's come back to this object here, our main body there, and we're just going to run a loop cut down the middle. I'll rip that with the V key. Um, then what I'm going to do is just grab these edges again and put my cursor there, tab out, and I'm going to say set origin to 3D cursor. Then I'll add a mirror modifier to that on the x-axis enable clipping and then I'll just take that round part of the body join it to that with control J um, and now we have basically the right shape for the body of the ship so that completes everything we're gonna do in this video in the next section we'll go ahead and work on the wings hello again and welcome to the third part of this video modeling course so in this section we're gonna go ahead and block out the basic shapes of the wing quick note um, the guy who made these drawings for me actually asked if I wanted a view of the wing rotated completely flat so it'd be easier to model um, and I actually told him I didn't because sometimes you're not going to have all the drawings that you'd like when you're modeling aircraft and spacecraft so learning how to make stuff that's at an angle and still have it line up is a pretty useful skill set so that's what we'll do here um, what I'm going to do is come to another layer, in my case layer 2, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then what I'll do is just hit my N key to pull up the shelf. You can see we're in the front view here, so I'll just go ahead and take this one right here. And now we just need to rotate this drawing. So I'm going to rotate it till that wing is about flat right here. Um, it's somewhere around negative 25, so we'll just make it negative 25 exactly. Go ahead and add a cube in here just like that. And I'm going to scale that down here on this layer okay and I'm just gonna match this or try to match this uh, view from the front and it doesn't really matter that I don't know quite what this looks like these shapes uh, as they go back we're just gonna try to make it match from the front and then we can work on it uh, on our other layer using a uh, duplicate mesh basically and I'll show you guys that in a minute so let's go ahead and finish this part first again we're just trying to get uh, all of this stuff, all of these shapes here to match. So I'll just scale that down on the z-axis here, bring that out. Okay, we'll just duplicate that. And I think this is the main part of the wing right here that we have. So we'll just bring that all the way out like that. Okay, select all of that, duplicate it again. We'll go for this shape right here. And I can see that it's beveled a little bit but I don't really care about that right now. We can always fix that later, change that later. And we have one more here. Okay, we'll just do that. 
Um, so let's go ahead and add our uh, cylinders in here. We'll make this 24 because that's a little bit of a smaller cylinder. Okay, scale that down. Just bring this here like that. That should be good. Let's add another cylinder. We'll make this one 32 sides because we'll do these. It's a little bit bigger. And we're not going to do both of these. We'll just do the one. And once we get the modeling how we like it, we can always just duplicate it and bring it down later. So that's about the right shape for that. Then let's just try to do this main cylinder right here. Put my, oops, Shift S, cursor to selection. And that's a pretty big one. We'll make it 64. Probably could have gotten away with 48 or something else, but uh, I think it'll work. And we'll just scale that one down about where that engine is. And I think that is, that's most of the major shapes. We have little engine details and stuff like that, but we'll add that once we get the basic shape of the wing set up. So now what I want to do is make a copy of this object, um, and I want it to share the mesh. So if we come over here to the mesh tab, you can see that the name of the mesh is cube. Um, the name of the object also happens to be cube on this tab here, but it's the mesh data that we're interested in because you can share this data between two objects and then when you modify one, the other one will change as well. So if I just duplicated that with Shift D and then just rotated it at some weird angle, for example, um, and this was cube, so we'll just make that cube too. Okay, so now when I change one object, you can see it changes both of them. And that's what we want to do. So I'm going to duplicate this, move it to our first layer here, and then come back here. We'll go to our back view because that hasn't been rotated. And we'll just grab this, rotate it by negative 25 degrees so it matches the amount that we rotated the drawing on the other layer. And then just line this up right here like that. So now we can adjust this from the top view. Okay, and actually we'll just make this cube. I have to redo that now. Okay, so now we can adjust this uh, here on this layer and it'll carry over on the other layer. So let's just take our main engine shape and we'll bring that back like this. Okay, not worried about getting all this detail right at this point. Again, just sort of trying to get the basic shapes right. I think something like that. Let's take this box right here. We'll bring it back to uh, this edge because it looks like it sort of tapers at the front and it has an angular cut at the back. So I'll just pull it back further than it needs to go and I'll just use my knife tool really quickly to cut that. So we'll just delete those faces. That one will fill this in with my F key right there. And it looks like we have another part that sort of comes off to the back. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate that, use P to make that another object really quickly, then come down to the back and it's this piece right here. So I'm just going to run a couple of edge loops on that one. And we'll bevel that, select all the faces other than that one, delete those. And we can just extrude that on the y-axis, bring that in. Fix my normals there. Again, coming to the back view. Okay, well, I want like a, a cylinder or, you know, part of a cylinder here. So all I'm going to do is just grab these two edges and I'll just zoom in really quickly and I'll bevel them so that these points actually touch right there at that center point and then you can just roll your mouse wheel and get a bunch of additional geometry these aren't touching exactly we'll just go ahead and delete one of those um, and it's really really close to being a circle it's certainly going to be good enough for this so then I'll just go ahead and join that back to the rest of the body there so let's go ahead and grab some other pieces we have that little cylinder for this front piece I guess it's a, an antenna or maybe a weapon of some type bring that forward, extrude that, scale that out, extrude and scale, bring that in, maybe we'll say scale shift Y, bring that down just a little bit, and bring that up, okay that should be good. So let's see where the, the main part of the wing is this right here, let's do that. So that is this piece right here, maybe we'll just um, alt scale that out a little bit Okay, then we'll just take this face to the point where the angle changes, which is here. Then extrude that all the way out on the x-axis. I can grab these two vertices and just uh, hit my G key twice there. Move that along that axis, which is what we want. So let's see, this part is this sort of tapered or triangular section here. We can bring this box back here. 
just like that. And this is going to be this little uh, raised part of the wing there. Okay, so let's grab that face. We'll or, uh, alt scale that out again. And let's do this cylinder here, which is this. Okay, so I'll say extrude and scale again, bring that in. Maybe we want that a little bigger. Bring that back. Extrude and scale one more time. That should be good for now. Looks like this tapers a little bit at the front, so we'll do that. Okay, that's good. And then this piece right here, which just connects the wing to the body, basically. We'll just bring that back here and extend it back here for now until we know what we really want to do with all of this stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this. This has that taper at the front, so I'll extrude this right here. Then I'm going to come back to the layer with the other one, come to my front view here where this is rotated. Okay, I'm just going to take that, I'll scale that down on the z-axis, scale it down on the x-axis, and then I'll inset it a little bit just like that and we'll just pull it back in that should be good then the last thing we really need to do I think is to change this wing because it doesn't come past the cylinder here or it shouldn't uh, that should really be the end of it so it looks like there's actually a little bit of a gap there um, but for now we'll just make it uh, sort of disappear into that cylinder so I just ran that edge loop there deselect those okay grab that right there and I think I can just grab these faces like this, delete those faces, and that should be good. And one thing I'd like to point out is you definitely want to keep this other one around. So you can move it to whatever layer you want or hide it or you know anything you want to do, but we'll be adding a lot of detail to this wing uh, later on, so definitely don't want to delete that right now. Okay, so in this section we've gone ahead and blocked out the wing, again without adding too much detail, but we've got everything you know, basically set up right so that we can add a lot more detail as we continue throughout the course.